What is happening, everybody? It's CJ here from Dream Diecast Cars, and today I'm going to be doing another episode of What's the Deal. Now, I have been pretty excited for today's episode because I'm going to be doing What's the Deal just a little bit differently than usual. You see, rather than just talking about one diecast car brand, I'm going to be comparing two of them, specifically Aguar and Mini Champs. However, as usual, I'm going to be addressing some of the comments that you guys have left me uh, at the beginning of this video, so if you want to skip that, then you can go to this part of the video. Now, for those of you who aren't skipping over to that part of the video, let's go over some of the comments that you guys have left on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, we're going to start with one thing. Well, I asked you guys a question on Facebook. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I've said it like many times, but uh, you can search Dream Diecast Cars on Facebook. Give that channel a like, or give that uh, page a like. Um, I asked a question, would you guys be interested in watching a live stream where I answered questions and showed you guys some of my collection? And uh, for you guys said yes, none of you guys said no. So uh, I'm going to take that to me that you guys would like me to do a live stream. So uh, I think a few of you guys actually tuned in for my test videos, which did not have any audio. But um, once I tinker with it and get the audio problem all sorted out, I think that's going to be really cool, so stay tuned for that maybe sometime at the end of this week. No promises, though. I was thinking maybe this weekend if I get lucky and I figure everything out, but uh, I would not count on that. Alright, so now let's go to another Facebook thing. Uh, it was me asking you guys, I said, I just bought a new model, any guesses on what it might be? And um, one person asked me for another hint. So I told you guys that uh, the diecast car I just bought was red, and I also said that this was a good hint because uh, most of the diecast or most of the cars you would find in real life would be the same color. So um, a lot of you guys guessed Ferrari, and some of you guys got really close, uh, F12, 458, but um, none of you guys got there. So I did my second hint, which was um, my second hint is uh, the model I just bought is four wheel drive. In real life, and um, I figured. Well, I wasn't sure if that would throw you off or lead you guys right to it. Um, and I did not get as many comments as I did on the first one. Though, let's see if I can find who left the comments. No, maybe not. But um, anyway, one of you guys said, I think, what was it? It was like, well, anyway, you guessed the model, and it, you guessed one other one. And the uh, model car I got, let's put a picture of that up on the screen. I can't remember the name or the uh, other one that you guessed, but you did guess Ferrari FF, which is the model car that I just bought. It uh, could be coming as soon as tomorrow. Well, actually, today I'm going to do this. I'm shooting this on Sunday, hopefully putting it out tomorrow, which is Monday. So um, it could be coming out on the day that you're watching this, or it could be delivered on the day that you're watching this. And I am very excited because it's not the usual uh, Ferrari FF that's made by Hot Wheels. Uh, and it is made by Hollis. It's their super elite version. Uh, so I'm hoping for that to be similar to a BBR, except for with opening doors, because um, it comes with the leather base, and it has like a cool box like the uh, Ferrari Enzo by BBR does. So I'm really hoping for that to uh, turn out well. Uh, I've got really high hopes, and I paid a lot for it, so it better be pretty good. Uh, yeah, so let's go on to some more comments. Now, also on Facebook, I asked uh, for some questions that I could answer on this video, and one person asked how many years I've been collecting for it, and uh, begged me to answer it on this uh, show, and I'm definitely going to because that is a very good question. Um, I probably got my first 118 cars, let's say maybe when I was like six or something, but I obviously wasn't like a serious collector then. I probably started getting very serious into diecast cars, like wanting to get uh, the, what are they called, the, uh, you know, the cases and stuff for them, and uh, wanting to just ask, asking everyone for my birthday and everything, just wanting all these model cars. I probably started getting really serious about it when I was like nine, so uh, it's weird to think that was only five years ago, because nine sounds really little, but uh, yeah, so probably about five years ago is when I got really serious, and I probably have been collecting uh, I had probably gotten my first 118 diecast cars when I was six, about eight years ago. Alright, so now to a YouTube comment from Edward Stepanyan. I hope I'm pronouncing that last name right, aka the guy who asked me if I could burn a cheaper car um, for my 1,000 subscriber special, uh, and got 14 likes on that comment. 
I uh, was just wondering about when I would be putting out this special. And I wouldn't say it's going to be soon. I'm thinking, I know this sounds like a long way away, but maybe three weeks. I still have to order the diecast car, and then I have to plan out everything I'm going to do. I really want this, I, I really want uh, that special to go well. Don't worry, I'm definitely still planning on it. But um, it's going to be somewhere in the, I mean, kind of far future, just a few weeks away. I wouldn't say it's going to be like insanely far away, but uh, it might be a little bit longer than you were expecting. I'm now to a Facebook question, which I asked. I said, of the soon release auto art cars, which one would you rather have? Uh, the options were the Pagani Huayra, the Koenigsegg Ajera, and the Pagani Vergon Super Sports. And um, now I actually voted, as you can probably see on the screen, I voted for the Pagani Huayra, and I was in the majority. Um, if you don't include me, there were eight other people who uh, voted for that, um, which was ahead of the Koenigsegg Ajera, which got five votes. And the uh, Bugatti Veyron Super Sports, which got three votes. So, um, yeah, I I'm very excited for the uh, mostly the Bugatti Veyron Super Sports. I've got to admit, I'm not super excited for, and I'm definitely gonna make my priority to get the Huera and the uh, Jera before that one, because I mean the Super Sports so similar to the Bugatti that I have, and I mean most people have the Bugatti by Art. I don't want to say. Most well, I mean, like a lot of big collectors, that's a fairly common uh, car, especially for one of that price. And um, it's just going to be so similar. It's not like there's a few out features on the outside change. And I'm sure that they're going to jack up the price really high because it's such a special car in real life. But I'm not sure it's going to be worth the extra dough at that point because, I mean, I'm sure it's going to be pushing $300. And, since it's so similar to the Bugatti Vera that I have anyway, I'm not sure I would do that. The Ajera and the Aquera are much different than any of the other diecast cars I have. And they're two of the new uh, cars that I think are going to be uh, very special supercars for years to come. Uh, the Ajera is beautiful and the Aquera is blazingly fast and it's, it's really futuristic and it's almost weird looking. but. I'm excited for that. I know that they're both going to be pretty expensive. I'm pretty sure they're going to be under the Auto Art signature. But, uh, I'm psyched. Uh, I'm going to spend my money on that, uh, because those are going to be awesome cars, and I hope I can pre-order them right away and be the first person on YouTube to review those. Uh, now to our last comment. I don't know how long this has been going, but I feel like it's relatively short today. By Ep Epic Exotic Cars saying, uh, hey CJ, uh, I'm looking for a car under $100 and I want good quality. Uh, he, or she, most likely, he said that uh, he got four diecast cars for his birthday from his mom. Uh, all, I think they were, well, yeah, they were all cheaper brands, maybe like $30 or $40. Nice cars, but cheaper brands. And um, so yeah, he uh, wants a nice diecast car under $100. Uh, some good brands for that would be definitely Hot Wheels Elite. That would be pushing $100 for some of them. Uh, one diecast car that I really want to order, I just don't have it yet, uh, is my favorite car in the whole world. I can't believe I don't have one yet. It's for our 458 Spider. I guess the only reason I'm not ordering it right away is because I know that it's going to be a $100 car and I'm not sure I'm so willing to drop $100 on something that's so similar to what I have already because I have the normal 458 and I mean if I'm going to spend $100, I want to save that $100 and get some of the like the Hoyeros and the Ajeras first, uh, use that money to pour towards that stuff before I get something that's similar. But uh, the uh, 458 Spire is my favorite car in the whole world. And uh, that's, so the Hot Wheels Elite, that's a good company, you have to make sure it's Elite. Um, for just about under hundred dollars, Nora, you can find good quality. Um, sometimes the trucks don't open, but other than that, they've got good quality engines and great quality interiors. Uh, so I'm sure you like that. What else? Some Kyoshos you can surprisingly find for uh, under a hundred dollars. Uh, it might be relatively hard. I'm trying to think which ones can you get from there. I'm not exactly sure, but I think if you search for some Kyoshos, you can definitely get some for under 100. I feel like I'm forgetting brand, but um, those three brands are 
great brands. If you want a Ferrari, you definitely got one for Hot Wheels and you do not buy uh, Hot Wheels. The normal ones are really crappy. Um, and BBR is over on you, $500 for a car that does not even include opening doors. So Hot Wheels Elite is really just perfect. It's like auto art, but it's cheaper and they make Ferraris. So now let's go right into the comparison. So, auto art versus mini champs. The question, which one is better? And the best thing about this question is really the similarities. If you were to ask me which one's better, auto art versus mini champs, that would be a dumb question because they're two completely different diecast cars. Completely different prices made for completely different reasons. However, auto art and mini champs are rather similar. The average price is probably around $150 for both brands, and they're both made for serious collectors. Now, right at the beginning of the video, I'm going to make it plain and obvious. I am a bigger fan of auto art than I am of mini chairs. So let's delve into the reasoning behind that. First though, let's look at the similarities between these two diecast companies. They make everything from luxury cars to supercars. They replicate diecast cars from a huge range of manufacturers, and their cars are usually a relatively similar price. Now, of course, there are outliers. For auto art, there's the Koenigsegg CCX and the Bugatti Veyron, which are a little bit more expensive than the average auto art. And for many champs, I have this Porsche GT2 RS, which costs a little bit more than the average mini champs. However, usually you will find the diecast cars in a price range of about $100 to $200. Both manufacturers also include exquisite detail and are made for a demographic of relatively experienced collectors. Now with all these similarities, you're probably wondering what my beef is with mini champs. Because as I said, I openly prefer auto art to mini champs. And the answer is the big C, consistency. I mean, it's a simple expectation. If you're paying over $100 for a diecast car, chances are you're a relatively serious collector who doesn't want to fuss about with things like this, which simply do not hold up to expectations which you have. Another shocking example of inconsistency is this, Mercedes-Benz SLS AMG made by many champs. Now my friend Bernardo, who you may know from some previous episodes of Dream Diecast Car, also owns one of these, and his has no felt anywhere in the diecast car. Now that's pretty weird, especially since it's the same exact car made by the same exact company for the same exact price. Pretty strange. Mine also had another strange and weird error, which is an extra 3 right here where it says 6.3. Uh, if you want to see a full review on this, you can click right here. Uh, but yeah, it's just pretty weird that that would be um, on there. It's just a very inconsistent thing to have on a diecast car, which is so expensive. Now I'm about to show you guys a problem I had with my SL65 AMG Black Series made by many champs. Uh, so first off, right here, for this little intake, there is a sticker. Now, it should be a real intake, but at least paint it on. Uh, having a sticker is terrible quality. But if you're going to put a sticker on, if you're going to completely uh, do the worst of quality and put a sticker on, make sure it stays on. Don't put a poor quality sticker on. How much can, or how little can we ask here? I mean, it's pretty ridiculous that the sticker is even falling off. Now, being disappointed by quality is one thing, but manufacturing errors? I mean, I know this is a tiny little detail, that extra fee right there, but it's pretty ridiculous because you are paying a lot for these. And a sticker on a car that cost, I think, about $175 at the time I bought it? Unacceptable. That right there is why AutoArt is the diecast car brand for me. They have a good price for what I'm looking for very detailed and you can find them from about $100 to $200 and you know what you're going to get every single time. Even a cheaper model such as this Maybach 57 which I found for only $100 has exquisite detailing on the inside. I mean look at it, it still includes felt and details which hold completely true to the real car. So to recap, I prefer AutoArt over many chance and in fact AutoArt is my favorite diecast brand in the entire world. They're more consistent than many champs and they're more well built than many champs. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that I would never buy a many champs diecast car. 
I just say that I would be much more wary when I bought one. For example, when I see a diecast car online that I like and I see it's made by AutoWart, I'm going to buy it right away because I know that it's going to be up to my standards. But if I see a diecast car I like online and I see it's made by Minichamps, I'm going to go on Minichamps website, I'm going to check pictures, I'm going to check reviews online because I'm just not sure how good it's going to be. Well everyone, thank you very much for watching this episode of What's the Deal. Hopefully next week I will be unboxing my Ferrari FF, uh, made by Hot Wheels Super Elite, I'm very excited about that. Hope to be opening that one up. Don't forget to like my page on Facebook, and if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to me on YouTube. Uh, I'm CJ, and I hope to see you guys next month.